Hey everyone, it's Art Prof Teaching Artist Deep D. Madden here, and I'm joined with Jordan McCracken Foster, another wonderful TA at Art Prof. Welcome everybody. Today we are doing a stream on Procreate with shapes and characters. If you are looking to strengthen and flex your art muscle, Art Prof is a community for you. We have tutorials, critiques, and more, and it's all for free. All right, so I wanted to bring up like the concept of shapes and talk about how like rooted it is in like some of our childhoods and how basic shapes and characters can be. And I think that artist Ed Emberley is a really good um, example of that. He is actually Prof Lou's uh, childhood how to draw book guy. And actually the links to his books are in the video description below and you see some of his work on the screen right now. But I think his work is a really, really clear example of how important shapes are in creating characters and how simple shapes can make the process of creating characters to be. Because um, sometimes characters seem really like complex, but really they can be like distilled down to very, very basic shapes. And we actually have a stream on shapes, which I think would be a lovely, um, you know, sister to this video where we go over the importance of shape in a bunch of contemporary and um, art history examples. But Jordan, do you want to get us started on just the basics of how to create a shape on Procreate? Because that is something little I don't know very well. Yeah, so the really cool thing about Procreate is that um, you can create perfect shapes. You don't have to, you know, guess. And, you know, there's all these, these people who go like, I can't even draw a perfect circle. I can't do it. I'm like, most people can't. So, uh, so I have a, a quick examples of shapes up here. But in order to do these, all I'm going to do is just draw a circle to the best of my ability on Procreate, and then I'm just going to hold it there. And uh, basically, what it does is it sort of completes the shape automatically. And if I put another finger on, then it creates a perfect shape like that. And if you want to fill it, just standard how we usually. Um, drag the, the color icon. And if you want to do a square, same exact thing. Just wait a second, put your finger down, creates another perfect shape. Triangles, same exact thing. And the thing I also really love about this is that uh, if you drag along like this, you can scale it and turn it. Uh, or if you want to do something that's a little bit more unique, you don't have to do one of these simple basic shapes. You could do something like a lightning bolt, let's say. And it'll automatically connect that into a perfect shape, and you can just leave it like that. Um, our prof is saying, you press your finger on the line to make the circle perfect. Yes, so you have to take a second finger if you want it to be a perfect shape and place it on there. So you have the Apple Pencil and uh, you know whatever other finger. It could be on the same hand if you're really skilled, or it can be your opposite hand whatever you want to do. Um, but it's cool. really, really simple. So I think I got it. What I'm doing is like with Apple Pencil, I'm drawing the shape and then I'm like leaving my pencil pressed on the screen to make it like clean. And then with my other hand, I'm putting my finger down like anywhere on the canvas, I've noticed it works. Yeah. And doing that will make it a perfect triangle. But if I release, actually I notice that it goes back to the kind of wonky triangle. So that's kind of cool. And then with my finger down and my cursor or my Apple pencil, I'm like doing the scale thing. Sweet. Yeah, it's, it's so, so awesome. Cool. Oh, let's see. Our prof is asking, what happens if you make a super blobby shape like an amoeba? Um, I'm not sure, actually. Let's find out together. Um, super blobby shape. Ooh. Something like this. OK, so it just becomes very uh, much like a polygon, basically. So. Instead of all the round shapes, it just creates this shape that looks vaguely like California, I guess, but <laughs> that's about it. That's super cool, actually. It makes it like super angular. Yeah, I actually didn't even think about that. So yeah, it, it just creates polygons. I guess the circle is the only thing that's kind of an exception. Or maybe if you do like an oval, an oval should work fine if I were to get close enough to that. Yeah, so you just create a perfect oval right there. So I think it has to be pretty specific um, when it comes to doing rounder shapes like circles or ovals or something. Anything else is kind of up for grabs um, if you do something a little bizarre like this. But um, yeah, 
It's fun. I like this. Awesome. So for characters, um, how do you normally go about building characters when you're thinking about shape? Um, well, to be well, first thing I think about is what kind of character I want, and I start thinking about the psychology of shape. Uh, and so, a couple of months ago, I started talking about, or I told my students about what different shapes will often symbolize. So, as a quick example, circles can be used for characters that are a bit more friendly, square for uh, things that are maybe stable and strong, and triangles for something more dynamic or villainous. And so, I'll think about what kind of character I want. And then I'll usually apply the shape to them as a secondary feature. But like, um, let me think of a cute character that everyone will recognize. Um, here, I'll just do this real quick. I think everyone should know who this is. Let's see. Bam. All right. And then if I just film these spots here, three circles, I'm pretty sure everyone should know who that character is, right? Mickey Mouse, one of the cutest characters ever. And it's just three circles. That's all I did. <laughs> and we all understand what that is. I created this weird thing while we were just experimenting and I'm already kind of seeing like a face in it. I'm gonna try and see if I can make it oh, in. That's, oh, that's awesome. This would be like bangs. I um, could like give it or like a helmet, maybe. You know, he looks kind of like a Futurama character. Like, um, what's the girl's name with the one eye? I don't remember. Oh yeah, with the. <laughs> I don't remember her name. <laughs> Neil is asking Jordan, have you tried using vector-based programs when working on more shapes, graphic-based stuff? It's been so long since I've touched Adobe Illustrator. I don't think I know how to use it anymore. <laughs> Uh, yeah, I've used Illustrator as well, and that's probably the program I would think of first when doing something more shape-based or vector-based. Um, I really only use that for specific scenarios. I don't like, I don't prefer to make art in that, but uh, if I'm doing something that requires really strong edges or something, um, or like some sort of logo type thing, then I'll use that. And there's an artist, Bob Stock, who actually does all of um, his work digitally, I believe. And he's like very much into shapes and all of his stuff is done on Illustrator, I believe. But as you can see on the screen on, or the slide on the screen right now, um, his work is very geometric and is all about like shape relationships to create these really cute characters. <laughs> Yeah, speaking of uh, cute characters, Deep Deep, um, I wonder if you can show everyone what you just showed me a few minutes ago with uh, that special technique. <laughs> oh my gosh, okay, well, only because you guys are my art prof fam, I'm gonna turn bright red in a second, but I was showing Prof Lu and Jordan when I used to teach elementary school. I don't know how I learned this, it's somewhere deep in my psyche but yes, I'm gonna sing for you guys. And you guys should do it along with me. It's really fun. Once you like learn it, you'll never stop doing it. It's how to draw a pig and it's a little song. So here we go. Watch my screen. I'm gonna do it slow. So the song goes, little circle, little circle, bigger circle, little circle, little circle, bigger circle, half a circle, half a circle, bigger circle. W, W, E, 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 a pig. <laughs> Thank you so much. That was the best. Jordan, that. I'm going to find a way to make you embarrass yourself on screen next time. You know, I don't know any songs like that for drawing, so... We're gonna have to we're gonna have to try hard for that one. <laughs> well, yeah, and then you can do it like super fast. You're talking to like a child, it blows their mind in general. But look at this, it's all really simple shapes. Even the W's are like, are like basically two kind of half ovals smushed together. And then the E E E is kind of cute. Um, but yeah, there you go, it's a little piggy. So awesome. Thank you for being willing to embarrass yourself, Deep D. You have no idea how much I appreciate that. Uh, it's what I do, Jordan, it's what I do. <laughs> 
Thornton is saying, okay, now I've seen and heard everything. Well, that's what I'm here for. Expanding <laughs> your horizons, I suppose. <laughs> um, yeah, I'm like super obsessed with this character I randomly created though. No, it's fun. I'm still not sure what I'm want to do. Um, I'm I'm seeing like this person that Jack in the Box type of hat. Maybe that's that's about as far as I've gotten. Oh, I love that. But I uh, did this project once, which might be like kind of fun that I might dive into, which is um, a good way to kind of start seeing shape relationships in an easy, simple way. Um, so I might start doing that, which is you kind of um you pick like four shapes four geometric shapes and you have them touch each other and they can be touch overlapping at like any amount um but you want and they could be any size whatever so i'm just gonna do like really quickly triangle maybe a rectangle here and then another circle. And then you kind of start to see the relationships and start seeing characters that way. <laughs> we have a comment from HT Poke Pack that says, just drew a pig with the song, first sketch of the day. Great way to warm up, thanks. You're welcome. Everyone should start their day with like a little circle, little circle pig and see what happens. You never know what'll happen. Yeah. But yeah, now that I have these shapes kind of t interacting with each other, um, you can kind of like mess with it orientation wise and see what you can come up with. Like over here, it kind of looks like a cartoonish cannon um, like this. I can see maybe a duck or something. I'm still trying oh. to figure it out. I'm still trying to figure it out too. I think I just gave my character an apron <laughs> for no reason. At all. Oh gosh. Your character has a beer belly. Yeah, beer belly and an apron. Um and some maybe a missing tooth up here. <laughs> and then what I like to do is, you know, you have your geometric shapes, but you don't always have to stick to it. Like I like how you are, Jordan giving it this kind of like crisp geometric look, but you can kind of think of shapes as a guiding factor. And I can see this maybe as a, this triangle area as like a head that's triangular in shape. Maybe the eyes are like that little face there. Maybe this are two hands over here. And the cool thing with drawing with shapes too is, um, or thinking about shape as you work is when you're designing characters, is there's so many different, uh, there's so many different ways to do it. Uh, if you think about like Mickey Mouse or the Powerpuff Girls or something like that, they're all made up of round shapes. And it's so, there's so many combinations that it's almost, impo I feel like it's almost impossible to, to end up with something boring on a lot of levels, you know? Definitely. I mean, it's like Family Guy 2 is a great example of a animated show that uses really simple shapes and um, does a lot with that. Yeah. Blue sure. is saying Jordan is making a medieval baker. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. That's perfect. I've never looked at medieval bakers. Let's give them a, let's give them a fun nose. Should we give it? Art Prof is saying, Jordan, can you demo how to cut a shape out of another shape? Got to work that negative space. Yes, negative space. Of course, of course. Um, here, let's do this on the side here. So let's say I have um, this blue square, semi-square. Then on a new layer, I'm going to create another shape. Uh, let's make this one like an orange. And... Um, to make this just a little triangle. So what I would do is I would place this triangle on top of the, the square and I would go to the layer panel up here and I would select uh, 
the the layer. So if you tap it, then select should be the second thing on there. And then I'll go back to the layer that the blue square actually is because I'm trying to cut a shape out of that. And then what you can do is uh, three, sw three finger swipes down um, and you should get the copy paste menu. And then you just hit cut and turn off that layer, which I should have done before to show you. But now that is completely cut out and I can move it around and it's just a little square with a triangle missing for some reason. And yeah, it's, it's, it's pretty simple, but you can do a lot with it. Yeah, I think negative space is something that is often overlooked, um, but is a really cool tool to use. Like even if, I'm trying to copy what you just did. Let's see if I can make an example on my own. Try and do another practical example. Let's try this. Okay. Oops, oops, oops. Oh, wait. New layer. Okay. Okay. Select. Three finger swipe. Wait. Right. Ordinarily, I would probably not design a character this way, but. <laughs> Hold on, I'm doing something wrong. Uh oh, what's going on? You get you get you need help? Yes. Okay. So I have my triangle and I have my oval. Uh huh. On two layers. Okay. I'm tapping the triangle layer uh -huh. and I'm hitting select. Okay, got it. I did that. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to the oval, mm -hmm. three finger swipe, mm -hmm. cut. Why did this happen? Uh, I don't think select actually worked for you then. That's probably what happened. Um, undo that. So, okay, mm -hmm. let me let me try. Let me copy you. Let me let me wrote one second. Okay, let's uh, change that color real quick. Okay, and then you have a triangle on the next layer. Okay, so you're trying to cut the the red shape into the yellow one, right? Yes. Oh, sorry, the triangle into the circle. So, all right, tapping this triangle, hitting select. You got that? And you should have like this grainy texture thing kind of going across. It's kind that of didn't to... happen for me. Is there a okay, reason? That's probably, that's probably what it was then. Um, so make sure you hit select. Is it showing up? I mean, it's the no triangle thing is happening or this texture thing. It is? It's not. Uh not um that is so odd uh, huh. that's oh, weird that's the only way to do it um when you hit select do you get like a little bar at the bottom yeah there should be a little bar at the bottom that comes up um, what does it say on that little bar um, it'll say automatic, freehand, rectangle, ellipse. Um, I usually don't touch that, though. Okay, because mine is on automatic, and it's on add and color fill. Automatic? What? <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, okay, yeah, that's, that's, that's fine. Um, but that menu shouldn't really uh, mess you up so much. So, yeah, all I know to do is... Hit select on the top layer and then swipe to cut on the bottom and that's how i would get that shape i'm so oh, sorry bizarro okay well maybe mine's just broken <laughs> uh as you're figuring that out uh vishaka has a, a comment i have just started using procreate and sometimes i fill one place and draw another shape on it 
and try filling it, it goes all over. Could you tell me why that happens on the same layer? So, um, oh, like I did a hill f filled green, then made a tree on the same layer, tried filling it, and the color changed for the whole hill. Oh, um, okay. So, wait, where's that? Can you bring up the first comment one more time? Um, uh, so typically when you're trying to fill something and it covers the whole canvas, it be it's because uh, the shape isn't filled in properly. So let's say I have... Um, say I have this shape and let's say I have this little bit that is not filled in completely and I try and fill it then it's going to cover the whole thing um, so if I undo that and I go and fix that problem and I fill that hole then now it just fills in like that um, that's usually what I find to be the issue um, I hope that answers your question DP how you doing over there <laughs> Still, still, still figuring it out, but okay. fret not. I have not lost faith. Just okay. let's see. Colleen says, "How did you choose the background and the colors you're working with?" Uh, well, originally, originally Deep D and I both had white backgrounds, and then Clara said we should make it something else, and so we colored them both. And I think we just both chose randomly. <laughs> That's certainly what I did. Yes. We just, I just picked a fun color. Yeah. Um, Maya Hika says, I think shape is an element that most beginning character designers overlook. Even if the shape is subtle, it is definitely still there. Yeah, definitely. Um, shape is, like I said before, incredibly important. And I actually try, I don't think about character design without having shape as a consideration. So, like, um, let's see. And even if it's not like these basic shapes, like if you want to do something slightly more complex, let me see if I can think of something real quick. Um, oh, here. Yeah, I'll just, since I brought up the Powerpuff Girls a minute ago, they're pretty simple. Bunch of circles. Cute little smile, and then... Uh, I don't remember exactly how it looks, but I guess we'll just do bubbles. Oh, that looks so much like bubbles. I'm kind of going off memory because I don't know. Like their pupils are kind of strange, like the way their eyes. Kind of, oops. Kind of go. Let's see. Oh wow, <laughs> those are some eyes. They must. They they're probably. So had so much fun on the production team working on these characters because they're just they're so cute and fun. Um, I they, love um, him, the like villain in Powerpuff Girls. That's one of my favorite characters of all time. Oh yeah, he's hilarious. Just very I don't even know what the word is. Just like creepy yet like sensual at the same time. But it's a kid show and it's, <laughs> it's like kind of weird. Um, okay, so. Not the best drawing of bubbles that I've done or in the world, but um, I just use basic shapes. Like these are basically, you know, kind of oval shapes, rectangle body, oval head, round eyes. And, you know, if I were to spend more time trying to figure out how to, um, you know, put it together to make it more on model, then I could. But that's basically all you really need to do. My Suko is saying thanks for the piggy song and relaxing freeform exercise. You're welcome for the piggy song. Thank you so much for this super chat. It really means a lot. Helps keep our prof free and accessible for everyone. So thank you so much. All right, update on my thing. I couldn't figure it out. I got frustrated, so I took a pause and I'm going back to my exercise. I don't know why I can't figure it out. It's like so simple and easy, but it's not working on my procreate. I'm so sorry. It's not your fault. It's it's the procreate overlords just don't want me to do it. So I guess I won't do it. I hear you loud and clear. clear. Yeah. Colleen is asking, is procreate more beginner friendly than Photoshop? Um, I guess so. Um, I think so. 
Yeah. Like, let's put it like this. Clara was able to pick it up pretty quickly, and she said multiple times that uh, she doesn't know how to use Photoshop, so, uh, or, or is very new with digital, so. I think, I think so. I don't know, Deep yet. Oh, you said you, you, you agree. Yeah, and I think it comes with, like, I mean, I love Photoshop, and I think it's great, but I think that Procreate, like, it comes with so many awesome brushes that are just, like, easy to use. I feel like the interface is pretty easy to use. Overall, I think it's quite user friendly, so mm -hmm. I definitely recommend it. Skylar Morrison says, at Colleen, Photoshop has a lot of tools, and it can be hard to figure out what to do with each. So in my opinion, Procreate is simpler to start off with. Yeah, I mean, if you're just trying to figure out how to draw digitally, Procreate is, I think, perfectly fine. Uh, I've used Photoshop for years, and I don't know all the stuff that you can do with it. So it can be overwhelming to some people. Uh, plus, the subscription fee is not necessarily the most fun to, to deal with. Yeah, that is another nice thing about um, Procreate. It's that you kind of just pay once, and then you're kind of set. Miranda try. is saying, I did a circle bird, which turned out cute. Then I tried to do a triangle bird, but it turned out into Phineas's head from Phineas and Fur. <laughs> <laughs> that's hilarious. I mean, that's awesome because you're discovering, like, I love that you went from triangle, which is really simple, to bird, which is kind of like a generic animal, like not a hyper-specific type of bird. And then you went to, like, Phineas's head, which is, like, a super, super specific character like that's an awesome progression to have discovered you know i've never understood i love phoenix and fur but i never understood how that kid could put on a shirt <laughs> like you really think or have you seen the um like the mascots of of phineas and fur like what they look like when someone's in a costume of them no but i need to that sounds they're, hilarious they're pretty creepy because when you look at them straight on they look like this like Phineas, he just looks like this, with like a mouth. He looks kind of like uh, <laughs> like a fish. <laughs> it's it's really funny. That's hilarious. But then from the side, it's like a, it's like that the flounder and the SpongeBob that bully who like he comes in and he's so skinny and then he like turns yeah. to the side and he's like yeah. giant. <laughs> it's the best. Oh, Davy is asking is saying deep deep. Does it make a different? It difference if you select the image icon versus the layer name. I don't know Procreate, but that would make a difference on Photoshop. Okay. Select the image. I don't think so, right? Because it, it shows up the same, like, options. Yeah, no, it wouldn't make a difference at all. Maybe it was a good, it was a good tip, though. Thank you. Yeah. Um, by the way, what I'm doing right now is kind of how I would approach shape when I'm typically doing character design. Um, unless I'm really stuck, I probably wouldn't use like the full on like shapes like how we've done it here. I personally like using line and um, and designing the characters based on that. So like I kind of have this rounded triangle shape and I add a cheek and some circles and I'm gonna figure out what body I'm gonna put on this person. Um, starting to look like Peter Griffin a little bit, but I'm going to try and change it up a bit. I drew a bunch of shapes overlapping, like I was explaining earlier, and now I am trying to find, like, form in them. Neil is saying, Deep, you can't use a clipping mask. Thoughts, Jordan? Yes, you can use a clipping mask. Um, it, if you tap it, uh, the layer, it comes up maybe about uh two thirds of the way down the menu. But would that have worked for the issue I was having? Uh I think so. Let me see actually. Let's try that again. So let's circle up. Oops. Uh, no, so clipping mask would not have worked, but it would have left it. It would have created the shape, but it wouldn't have cut it out. So oh, that's kind of cool. Yeah. So if you want that effect, then that that can be fine. 
Um, it, it depends on what you're working on, though. Um, but typically, if you want to actually cut the shape out, then I would still do the same method as before. Yeah. Since it looks like Pac-Man. Great suggestions, everyone, though. Yeah. Look at us figuring out yeah. Procreate together. Yeah, we're doing it. The group effort. <laughs> Maria Kilson is saying Deep Dees is kind of looking like a one-eyed cat with the most fabulous light purple hair ever. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I've been watching um, a series of unfortunate events, so now I'm kind of inspired by Count Olaf right now. So I'm going to give him like the little goatee and sideburns and stuff. I think the one with um, what's his name? Uh, New Patrick Harris. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yep. I've binged the first. Well, I've seen the show before, and I used to read the books as a kid, but I've watched almost all three seasons in about a week. <laughs> wow. Yeah. Oops. Man, fun though. Seven Angelic is saying, "Okay, is there a dodge and burn tool in Procreate? Because I can't seem to find it." Uh, not that I know of. Um. So keep in mind, Photoshop, so the dodge and burn tool is a Photoshop specific tool. And Photoshop was kind of adapted to become a drawing program. It's not meant to be a drawing program, which is why you'll see a lot of artists choose Procreate or Clip Studio Paint over Photoshop, even though Photoshop is still great. I, I use it all the time. Um, but no, it does not have a burn and dodge tool. Soidenly says, couldn't you just draw the triangle and color match the background? Um, you could do that, but that would only really apply to something that's more graphic like this, where we're not really, we're kind of just sketching for fun. Let's say we have a background that's like a full on painting of like a fantasy landscape, then that doesn't really work so much anymore. Um, so it, it depends on the scenario. Is my version of a Powerpuff Girl. <laughs> I love that. <laughs> the best. Bleepkin is saying, I don't have Procreate, but is there a magic wand effect? Like, for example, if you didn't want to select the whole layer in the drop down menu, I believe there is. Jordan, would you like to explain? Um, yeah, so it, it's unfortunate because you can't see my whole screen, but basically if you tap on this selection tool, which looks kind of like an S at the top left, then on the bottom there's a screen or a little pop-up that comes up where it says automatic freehand rectangle ellipse, and then you would hit the one that says automatic, and what that does is it basically, um, let me try that again, you can tap any of these things and it creates a magic wand effect. Um, and you can select all this stuff that's in this blue. Um, I would show you more, but you literally can't see it because our screens are slightly cut off. Um, good question though. Maria is saying, Jordan's character looks like he's about to scold me for passing notes in class. <laughs> <laughs> that's very accurate. We got, and that's the case, we gotta find out what the, this teacher's name is. I don't know. Do you have any teachers that scarred you as a kid? Oh you, man. Um probably, but I'm like scared they're watching. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we'll come up with an alias, I guess. Um maybe you know what? I, I, I just thought of one. Um you ever watched the movie Lean on Me? Yeah. With with Morgan Freeman? Yeah. We can just call him Mr. Clark because <laughs> Mr. Clark was, he was something else. He was something else. It, it's a great movie from the late eighties for you guys who don't know it. Um, and I absolutely adore it. That's a great, great choice. Yeah. Mr. Clark. 
Gargi is saying, I just joined and love the yellow part of the triangle head. This stream seems so much fun. It is fun. I like doing exercises like this too, because it's a little less um, like product focus and more process focus, which I think a lot of times people have a hard time with. Just like enjoying the process and seeing what happens. Yeah. Is saying questions for Jordan. One, Procreate or Autodesk slash other programs. Two, iPad tabs or drawing tablets like Wacom. Okay. Um, first question about Procreate versus Autodesk. Never used Autodesk. Um, I there's one. So I use Procreate. There's one called Art Studio, which the only reason I really bought that one to be honest is because it can handle much bigger files. And when I was in school, there would be times where I wouldn't be able to open up my homework assignments in Procreate. So I had that. Um, but this is pretty much all I use. And as far as the iPad and tablet, um, I just had a discussion about this the other day with someone I was mentoring. Um, both can be really, really good. Uh, it depends on what you want. A lot of people like the iPad because it's mobile. Um, and but sometimes you can't create as big pro big projects on it um there's workarounds it just really depends i personally have both i have a cintiq right here and uh an ipad i got them at different times in my life and i use them for different things so um yeah but there's plenty of videos on youtube comparing the two uh if you're interested in buying one or the other Yeah, I think with all the, the questions about like what works best is like just kind of like what works best for your process sometimes and like you as an artist. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's the difficulty when it comes to suggesting things because everyone's so different. And um, like the things that like just looking at Deep Dean and me, like our process for how we're handling this is so different, yet neither one of them is wrong. So that same thing goes for what you like to use as well. Um, we have a comment from Maya Hika. It says, Procreate is paid, right? I want to try it someday, but I don't know if it's actually worth the money. Procreate's only like $15, and it's a one-time payment. Um, and you get all the updates that they're going to have in the future. So I personally think if you're talking about any drawing um, software, that Procreate is probably the most worth it because of that alone. Um, yeah. Yeah, I agree. I was amazed at the low price point and the kind of amazing stuff you get and all the updates are free and everything, like you said. So I actually think it's very much, it's very, very worth it. I'm doing some like client work right now and I'm using Procreate just like, like tech company client work and I'm just using Procreate and it's awesome. Yep. Neil is saying, don't you need to have an iPad to get Procreate? I have a feeling that the iPad is more expensive than Procreate. That is very true and valid. You do need an iPad, right? Jordan? Yes, you need an iPad or um, they do. If you have an iPhone, they do have an app called Procreate Pocket, which is the same exact thing, but just on your iPhone. I don't have an iPhone and I'm not sure how people make art on it on a screen that small, but I do know it's possible. Um, so yeah, that is one downside to it. You gotta have an iPad. Ugh, I messed up. Yeah. Okay, Jordan, I don't think there's an answer to this, but I wanted to draw this blue line on a different layer than the shapes I did underneath, and then I did it on the same layer. Is there any way to separate them, or have I just <sighs> okay. ruined my life? There might be a way, but you might still have to struggle a little bit. So go to your selection uh, at the top, the little ribbon icon. Oh, OK. And then tap, uh, and make sure it's on automatic at the okay. bottom. And then tap on the lines that you actually drew that you want, the blue lines. Oh, no. It's like not going to work. OK, no. no. It's because okay. I use like a penciled one, too, so it's like grainy. Uh, so. Yeah. It's okay. You know what? Yeah. I'm just gonna... That oh, is I'm... the curse. That is it's the okay. curse. 
It will not bring me down. I'm so sorry. Oh, let's see. Vishaka is asking a question. Jordan, can you show how to blur the outlines of any shape? Why, certainly. All right, so let's take this Mickey Mouse, for example. Um, just for the sake of ease, I'm just going to select Mickey so that all the other things aren't affected by it. And then what you do is you go to your adjustments panel, which is this one, the top left. And then you go to Gaussian blur, or you can also do motion and perspective blur. Um, but Gaussian blur, you tap that, and I'm going to hit layer. And then uh, if you can read at the top, it says slide to adjust. So I'm just going to slide my finger across like that. And it becomes more and more blurred. And there's a little percentage at the top and a little, um, there's a slight blue line. It'll tell you like how far or how bl blurred it is. You can go anywhere from zero to hundred percent. So yeah, you could do that. I'm actually kind of curious to see how motion blur would work. So I actually don't know. Okay, maybe motion. What does motion blur do? Huh. Okay, I don't know what motion blur, blur does <laughs> exactly, but yeah, who knows? But hopefully, that answered your question. We have a $2 super sticker from Jill. Thank you so much for this donation. You are awesome. We appreciate you. Thank you so, so much. Thank you. All right. All right. I just decided to start drawing what I was drawing earlier over again. I'm so sorry. That's the worst. I know that pain. It's okay. It was my own fault. I wasn't paying attention. We all we all face that that struggle. It's like the worst thing that can happen as a digital artist. You do all this work, and then suddenly you're on the wrong layer. It's I literally pain. couldn't believe it. It's just pain. I remember one time I had to redo. An entire assignment like two or three times because the um, the file got corrupted twice in in a row and it was an it was like a castle drawing so I had to redo it twice before it was due and I kept getting uh, held back it was very very challenging and I wanted to cry. <laughs> it's like having a hard drive crash on you and just losing all of the. Yeah, that's basically what happened. It was painful. It was so painful. But what can you do? When something's due, you got to get it done. You live and you learn. I didn't even do anything for that one. That's what made, makes it so messed up. <laughs> Let's see. There we go. Anything else I want to add to this guy? I'm trying to think. I guess he's okay for now. All right, here's my character made up of funky shapes. But basically, all I did for for him was I gave him a slightly rounded triangle head, rectangle body, and arms and stuff. And then I just add little shapes like circles, triangles, circle, triangle. And that's, that's how I created the entire character, just made up of a bunch of those. And uh, I had a lot of fun with it. Uh, let's see. Our prof is saying, Jordan, I often see you select the character and smoosh it, flatter, or stretch it out. How do you know what is a good time to do that for your character? Um, so the reason I did that with this guy a couple of moments ago is because it just felt out of proportion for me, and it just it just felt weird. Um, like his head was too small, and since I didn't really give him a neck, um, I felt like I needed to make the head a little bit bigger to make it just more aesthetically pleasing. And uh, that's more of a personal choice. Everyone has their own kind of way of going about stuff, but uh, yeah. Let's see. So who should I do next? Uh, hmm. Okay, let's try. Let's 
to kind of a whole rounded shape like this. I think I'm gonna give this guy like a beanie or something. Clara is asking me, did you find you're more attracted to round mushy shapes as opposed to geometric ones? Also, please show everyone your butterfly animation. Okay, we'll show everyone my butterfly animation, if you insist. Um, I do find that I'm attracted to more round mushy shapes. I'm not entirely sure why. I think I just like drawing like a curvy, like the curvature and the overlapping like fold and of it all. But um, I gave my little bird a bikini top, if anyone noticed that. Thought that could be a cute little addition. Slash, they felt kind of indecent, so I was like, all right. Um, Soyton Lee is saying, Deepti's character is looking like a chicken hormone monster. <laughs> <laughs> that is super on brand for me. So I love that. I'm going to quickly show people my little squishy butterfly. Yes. Show the world. This is my little butterfly doing crunches. I did this in like an hour before this stream. It's also anyone who says animation takes long, it's a loop and it's one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. It's twelve frames. So it's twelve drawings. And it loops. So it's a mushy little butterfly doing a little ab workout. I wish I could hear him kind of like grunt, like, <clears throat> you know, like I just, <laughs> I just keep picturing that every what? time I see it. Two, three. <laughs> <laughs> so cute. I love that. I'm going to post him on my Instagram after this stream. So give him some love, folks. Butterfly NFT. Guys, I'm trying to get in on that NFT. I don't understand it at all. All I know is from the Art Prof stream that we watched, which was pretty pretty great but i still don't like the internet art world like makes no sense to me but hey if anyone wants to nft buy my butterfly let me know <laughs> i don't know how it works but let me know <laughs> yeah i'm still trying to figure it out too it just makes it's like so much money that people are making I'm like how Ronak is saying, oh my God, I could eat Deep Dew's butterfly. Don't you dare eat my butterfly. That is my baby. <laughs> Just kidding. You can eat my butterfly. Um, Blue is saying, Deep Dew's character look like they're made from raw pizza dough. <laughs> Sometimes I feel like I'm made of raw pizza dough. So that's probably why. I'm like, if you put me in an oven, I'll probably turn into a pizza. Would you now? Maybe there's only one way to find out. Do you really um, want to find out though? <laughs> no, no, I'm happy the way I am. <laughs> I just, oh, we got a super sticker from Iggy. Thank you so much, Iggy. You are awesome. We appreciate your support and your love for the Art Prof family. Thank you, Iggy. Have you done any animation in Procreate, Jordan? I made a, uh, how you pronounce it? Is it GIF or GIF? I, I hear two different pronunciations and I don't I say there. GIF, but, because okay. it generated something, something, so it's like, G. Oh, but then generated is G. I just yes. confused myself. Yeah, see what I'm saying? Like, I actually have no idea. It, it always depends on the conversation. But I'm, I've made uh, one or two of those, um, but I haven't actually gotten into like full on animation. And uh, part of it is probably because I'm super ambitious and I want to do like a crazy like fight scene or something or like action sequence. And uh, I'm always a little too busy to actually like feel like I can devote time to that. Yeah. I was curious because I've heard that Procreate's great for animating quicker things like gifs, gifs, whatever you want to call it. Um, but for something a bit more lengthy or involved with a lot of layers, it's kind of a bit harder. I'm not entirely sure. So I was wondering if you had any thoughts on the matter. Uh, well, I do know that Procreate, you know, it works with the, the size of the file does matter with how many layers you can create, you know, so if it's like a bigger canvas, if it's got more uh, layers gonna 
it's going to involve um, a different set of uh, anim or animation techniques. So I have only seen people do very simple stuff. I haven't seen anyone do like a full length two two minute short or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. yeah. Let us know in the comments. Is anyone animated on Procreate, and are there like limitations on length or? Um, Vishaka is asking, why is Deep to using brush and not filling in the color? Um, I'm using a brush because you can't really see, but if I zoom in, I kind of like this, you can kind of see it. I like the grainy texture that this pencil is giving me, and I'm planning on adding like a little bit of shading. When you use the drop tool, it gives you like a flat overall, um, even fill. So I wanted a little bit of this, the grain. Certainly a saying, on iPad 7, I am limited to 27 frames for GIFs. Okay, that's good to know, thank you. So 27 frames is honestly not that much, because that's yeah. like, like Depending seconds. on how many frames per second you're shooting on, I normally shoot on 12. That's like a little bit over two seconds. Yeah. There's other apps for animation too. There's one called Rough Animator that I've heard is really good. I think that's maybe 10 or $15. And I'm pretty sure you can do much longer animations on there. Uh, I don't know how good the drawing tools work though. I don't know if they're, they're pro they may or may not be as good as the ones in, in Procreate. Uh, Colleen says, is he a skater, Jordan? Oh, I assume I'm talking about this one. Yeah, he could be a skater. Um, <laughs> or, I don't know, some shady guy. Uh, yeah, he looks a little shady. Yeah, I don't know. I don't know. You guys can make up your own story about this individual. Maybe he's the guy who you think is shady off of his first appearance, but then he ends up being the guy who like helps you at the end. Oh, there we go. See? Shape language, all that stuff, it can be deceiving. Uh -oh. Wrong color. Can be deceiving. Blue is saying, yeah, but can't you just do two seconds a bunch of times and then string them together maybe in another program? You could, but I think that if you're working on like a longer piece, like um, the lucky music video, which I know that you've seen of mine blue. Um, I think you like want the transitions to happen smoothly and you like, if you're trying to plan out a longer thing, you can't guarantee that every leak you can cap things at two seconds. So I think it's just a little bit more work and a bit more of a pain. And there are other programs that might be easier. So, but yeah, to each their own. I mean, if that works for you, that's awesome. And Definitely do that then. I feel like a situation like that would create a necessity, you know, oftentimes limitations are the mother of creativity. Um, and so in a situation like that, you really could come up with some really cool scenarios for how to create a interesting animation. Limitations are the mother of creativity. What a quote. Nice one. I am not the originator of that one, but I'm glad you like it. <laughs> well, see. you performed it well. Thank you. Thank you, Deep D. <laughs> um, you will, uh, Adama says, Blender has grease pencil for animation, too. Ha Do you know what grease pencil is, Deep D? No, what is that? You know uh, Blender, the app? Or the yeah. Stuff? So they recently came out with something called grease pencil where you can uh, animate in a 3D software, but with 2D, like you can animate in 2D on a 3D software. It's really bizarre. And I can't even show, I can't even describe it really. It's it's basically just drawing and animating in a 3D space. Uh, I can't get the hang of it just yet because you can like rotate stuff and depending on the angle, it shifts. Like you guys just need to look it up on YouTube. It's really, really crazy. And I can't figure out how to use it just yet, but Hopefully. Well, what do people use it? Like, what have you seen it successfully used in? I mean, um, like a 
well, people will create their own like short films and stuff like that. People will storyboard. They'll animate whole sequences in Blender. Yeah. Um, kind of like, like anything. It's, uh, it can be used. Blender is like the most amazing thing I've ever seen, but I can't figure out how to use it. I was actually mm -hmm. trying today, and there's like you. I've seen people create video games on there. You can create movies. You can create 3D models, 2D animations, storyboards, and it's a completely free software. Is the other thing what it's completely free they make their money off of the tutorials they offer on their website um, oh my goodness and uh it's it's in it's insanity but um it's really really complex uh for a beginner do you need to use their tutorials to be successful in it um I would recommend using some tutorial. I don't know if you need theirs specifically because there's ton on there's a ton on YouTube for free. Okay. But, yeah. um, but if you were to just open the program and try and learn it yourself, you'd either have to have a lot of patience or be a genius. Um, and <laughs> so, I personally recommend having some form of help. When yeah, getting like, those are two things I am not. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, I I struggle with it a lot. I wonder who this I don't know who this character is, but I'm having fun with it. Our prof is saying Jordan, with so many characters being so well known, how do you make sure your own characters don't look too similar to characters that are really popular? Um so there's a couple of things. Uh, one thing I always start with when really working on my characters is something called a mood board. Uh, we Claire and I did a stream on that uh, so maybe even maybe about a year ago, and just talking about the process for that. And basically, what it is is gathering a bunch of references from film or real life or games or whatever, putting it on a collage and drawing inspiration from those. Um, having your own story is really going to help because. Everything is, every story is different. And uh, also, if you are concerned that your character is going to look like another's, then find unique ways to really push it. Like Matt Groening, um, one of the things that he did, which was brilliant, was he made all the Simpsons characters yellow. And it stands out, um, even though the shapes are pretty similar to some other, uh, you know, animation out there in terms of circles, squares, stuff like that. But, um, yeah. Oh, DP, do you have any notes on that? I think the mood board is a great um, example. And I think that, like, if you're feeling inspired, the best thing to do is to, like, buy another person's art is to recognize that and see what about it is inspiring you and figure out a way to make that inspiration your own. Because a lot of times I feel like the reason, like, quote unquote plagiarism happens or like your work starts looking a lot like another person is because you feel inspired by it, but you're kind of trying to suppress that. Um, but it keeps popping up. So I think like acknowledging that and being and putting that on like your mood board and figuring out how your work relates to it or what specifically you like in that and then remixing it and making it your own. Because your work is always going to be derivative of something else. Like people look at my work and tell me all the time it looks like 90s Cartoon Network or like Adult Swim stuff or like Cow and Chicken, um, which are all things that I watched <laughs> and feel inspired by. But I think figuring out like what exactly, like Cow and Chicken, for example, I loved how lumpy Cow's body is. And I'm sure that translates a little bit into this little bird that I'm drawing. Um, so picking and choosing and finding like the combinations to create your own, I think is my my humble advice. Vishaka is saying, I want to understand what was Deepti's thought process to make this bird? Was she clear in the start that it would be a bird and the eyes and all the features? Okay. Um, so how I started this was, I'm going to turn off these layers, was I just drew a bunch of shapes and overlapped them. Um, so these were the shapes that I drew and I was just kind of like playing around um, with circles and triangles and I was like, this looks interesting enough, let me stop. 
And then I started drawing some curves on top of it. And well, when I was looking at this shape, I kind of started to see things forming together. So um, these two circles that are on either side of that circular, <laughs> the main circle in the center I saw as eyes. And then that triangle I saw as a nose. So I was like, okay, let me just like go off of that. So I started to just draw what I saw. And I started to draw these two eyes. I drew the beak. Um, and I wasn't like sticking precisely to the shapes, like exactly in the size, but just like going off of them. Um, and then I was like, how do I incorporate that long triangle and the circle at the bottom? So I was like, okay, long upside down triangle is kind of an easy neck um, circle for the body. And then I added the wings. So those weren't in the original. And then my style is always to create things looking lumpy and a lot of curves. So that came out just naturally. Um, and then this weird little chicken happened. And I thought it'd be funny to add a bikini top to the chicken. So I did. And then I just started to pick random colors because my background is blue, complimentary. I was thinking about like yellows and oranges, making it stand out a lot. Um, and then I started adding some green on top of it with some fun psychedelic colors. I was like, why not just go crazy? And that is my little chicken. That was my thought process. Or no, it's not a chicken, it's a bird. It's like, I don't know what kind of bird. It's kind of sad, honestly. Like, the only hair left is on the wings. Well, you know, it's a, it's a, it's a creation of your own. You don't have to, it doesn't have to be uh, the most beautiful or the most, like, yeah, never mind. I don't even know what I'm saying anymore. <laughs> never mind. <laughs> I thought I had something. I was like, no, I forget it, forget it. I am there mentally as well. Vishaka is also saying, you guys are awesome. The way you answer is so easy to grasp and understand. Thanks. Of course. Thank you for asking questions. It's helpful because sometimes I feel like everything we're doing is like self-explanatory. And then I'm like, oh, wait, nobody knows what's going on in my crazy little mind. I should explain. <laughs> Yoel is saying, when you guys are designing, how much do you mix reality with fantasy? Ooh. Jordan, why don't you answer that question? Um, so the way I think about it, it um, I'm actually going to quote an artist named Fang Zhu on this one. So let's say we have a scale, right? And on the far left, we have 100% real. Um, and then here we have 100% fantasy. Now, between these two extremes, there's a lot of things you can do. And, you know, real life, what, what's an example of something that's real? Like maybe um, uh, like a rom-com or something like that or Breaking Bad. I don't know. Just something that has no magic whatsoever. Then you can go to fantasy and you can bring out Lord of the Rings, Harry Potter, Avatar. And um, really, it just depends on what it is you're trying to say. And... Uh, you can, and you can have some things that push the limits too far, in my opinion. Like, you could totally have an entire world made of bubblegum, but that might be pushing it a little much. Like, okay, like well, that, there's nothing we can relate to about a world just made of bubblegum. So, um, so really, it just comes down to the story you're telling, the the genre, the environment, um, all that sort of stuff. Um, but I always have at least one foot in reality. That's one thing I can always say. I can definitely relate to a whole world made of bubblegum. Speak for yourself. <laughs> fine, fine. What would you What would you do in a world filled with bubblegum? Chew it. Chew. <laughs> Make bubbles. What if your teeth fall out after like a couple of years? <laughs> then I'll just become one with the bubblegum. <laughs> just metamorphosize. That'd be kind of cool. Neil is saying, Jordan, have you tried sculpting digitally? I tried it and it's so confusing. Plus my laptop can't handle the program. It was so laggy and the experience is frustrating. I have, and like you, it was also confusing for me. Uh, I Doing 3D sculpting is a whole genre in and of itself. And there are some people who are incredibly skilled at it and I respect them highly. 
that is not my strength as of today. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. <laughs> I like that, as of today. Perhaps it will be your strength one day. Yeah, I think it'd be cool. You know, I'll take a course where I can learn ZBrush or something, or Blender. <laughs> I once tried that thing where you like, it's in an Oculus and you can like sculpt around you or like paint around you. That was kind of cool. Oh, I think my friend tried that and posted on Instagram. It was so cool looking. Yeah, I it was you're just kind of like painting in space and it creates these like shapes and then you can like manipulate it. It was wild. That's epic. See stuff like that sounds like fun. Yeah. Have you seen, have you seen those things where they turn like a Van Gogh painting into a real world and you and it's a um, virtual reality? Have you seen that? Kind of. So awesome. So I haven't fully, but like I know what you're talking about. Yeah, well, for those who don't know what I'm talking about, they um, some some group of people created uh, the Starry Night Van Gogh painting, but they made it into a 3D space, and you could put on the goggles, or you could even do it on your phone, and it would just you could just walk around the painting, and you could like see what was inside the shop, or what the steeple looked like a little closer, or the tree, or whatever it was. It was amazing. can't even begin to grasp the process of doing that. Like, it's so impressive to me. Honestly, I can't either. <laughs> Seven Angelic is saying, Jordan's girl has some attitude. I like it. She does have attitude. Yeah. She, <laughs> you know what? I, I mentioned earlier um, that I was watching um, Series of Unfortunate Events. There's yeah. a character in there named Carmelita Spatz, <laughs> who I just find hilarious. And uh, she's like this really annoying girl who just insults everyone. And she was in the last episode I watched, so I think I'm kind of getting those vibes. An annoying girl that insults everyone. That's hilarious. Do you know which character I'm talking about? No, I haven't seen it in so long. She's, she's the little girl who calls everyone cake sniffers for absolutely no reason. I need to rewatch it. You're inspiring me. It's so good. <laughs> Blue is saying, Deep Dee's bird needs to shave her pits. No, she doesn't. Women can have hairy pits, especially her. <laughs> especially because she doesn't have hair anywhere else. It's only on her wings. Let her have the hair on her pits. She has huge eyelashes. That's it. <laughs> I think I was saying, Q for Jordan. Is it normal that sometimes the process is in some of your character designs is much faster than other character designs? That is very normal. Um, Matter of fact, that I don't even like putting a time for how long a character design should take because different characters require different solutions. Um, there's one character that I've designed for, so for my project, there's one character that took maybe three, four weeks to figure out. Another one took 15 hours. Um, and the new, and the one that took 15 hours was even more complex in terms of all the stuff that I have on them. So. It just really depends. Um, so don't force it. Just create a character or create a design that fits with who that character is. Don't forget the word character in design. That's huge. Michael is saying, I just joined and felt very giggly from seeing Deep Tees love the bird. <laughs> Thank you. I'm glad it can give you a chuckle. I mean, I think even like color, like what you were saying, Jordan, about like, don't forget the character. I think characterization can come in through like color, all this other stuff. Like it makes sense that you giggled from mine and didn't like gasp from horror. I mean, it is a little horrific, but in kind of a funny, lighthearted way. Yeah. And I think the color and the soft curvy shapes um, all lend to that reaction. Vishaka is saying a small curve in the line can give so much character. Absolutely. Do you have any thoughts on that, Jordan? Yeah. Um, one thing that is very important for me in character design is a balance between straight lines versus curved lines and when to put that in. Um, and a lot of times characters that are more compelling will tend to have a better balance of both. So I gave an example one time 
uh, uh, for my character design class, I showed Professor X from Powerpuff Girls next to Samurai Jack. And when you just see them or for characters who, or people who know what they kind of look like, they look very similar. They're both, you know, wearing white. They have similar shaped heads. Um, but Samurai Jack clearly looks more exciting because his robes and his hair and everything allow for more curves. Um, so I think being cognizant of that is um, very, very important when it comes to design for anything, whether it's characters or not. Isabel is saying, Harry Pitts rule. Harry Pitts rule. <laughs> they do rule. If you got Harry Pitts, that's so cool. If you don't, that's cool too. <laughs> do whatever you want with your body. <laughs> <laughs> As long as deodorant's involved, please. That's true. <laughs> Does help. <laughs> Especially when you're, it's very hot in New York City. Yeah. Art prophesying, Jordan, why did you pick that pose for this character? Um, it just sort of happened. I was originally just gonna have, um, have them have this girl just kind of standing straight up and I, something just popped in my head, said, why don't you just turn the head around and have the body facing one way and the head facing another, and it sort of just created this interesting kind of shape. So, yeah, it was just fun. Um, like, a, like Bob Ross would say, happy accident. Happy accidents. I feel like this girl's like a hall monitor or something. Yeah, she definitely seems like the type of person that would like tell on you to the teacher. Yeah. But the teacher like honestly doesn't even like her. <laughs> <laughs> the teacher's a little like, can you please relax? Right. Yeah, she's the one who's like, I'm the boss of everyone. I'm so adorable. Everyone but then at the to. end of the film, you kind of like start feeling bad for her. And then she like. Well, oh, go ahead. She like gives her sob story of like how she has no friend and then all of a sudden you start feeling bad for her. You're like, okay, fine. <laughs> we get why you are so mean. I guess so. I wonder, I wonder what her sob story would be. I'm, you know, I'm willing to take suggestions from, from the people in the in the chat was her sob story this hall monitor girl <laughs> give her some little slippers what's my what's my bird sob story <laughs> why did she lose all of her hair everywhere except for her armpits eyelashes tip top of her head and tip top of her wings Uh, maybe she's some sort of escapee, like they were gonna, <laughs> they were about to put her in the, whatever, uh, factories for the grocery stores, and, uh, she's like, nope, I'm out of here, I'm gone. Oh my gosh, she was halfway <laughs> through being, like, processed for it. Yeah. Oh gosh. <laughs> Deep D, what happened to the bird's bikini bottom? You can't see because of the perspective, but she has a tiny little bikini bottom, but her big old belly is covering it up. <laughs> She's had a rough life. She has. She just escaped from her death, basically. Poor thing. You know what that reminds me of? The movie Chicken Run. Literally, I was having <laughs> the same thought. <laughs> just got saved a few minutes later. It, uh, it's dead. That's the only problem. <laughs> that is so funny. My Hika says she's probably pressured by her parents to have this image of being perfect. That's probably why she's mean to others. Okay. Not bad. It's not bad. Matter of fact, let's give her a little earring. Cute little earring. Yeah, I was thinking like her parents don't pay attention to her or like she has a perfect older sibling that gets all the attention. So she's trying to like. Make up for that. There's some classic, like, tropey. Yeah, I like that. I like it. I'm trying to live up to expectations, okay? Cool. 
Colleen is saying the girl's parents are always too busy in work, so she acts up in school to get their attention. Nah. Okay. <laughs> okay. That's a good one. Yeah. I think I don't even think the other last two are mutually exclusive. I think we can combine those two. This is hilarious. Emily is saying, I think your bird is a property manager who finally got to take a vacation. <laughs> <laughs> I've never met a happy property manager. That is hilarious. I love that. <laughs> this is so fun coming up with stories with everyone. And it all just started with some simple shapes. Right. Maria is saying she lost the gold in the judo competition because the other girl cheated and she couldn't prove it. Dang, she's a judo champ? That's awesome. I mean, with the move, like, she really looks like she can be a judo champ. Oh, snap. Okay, in that case, maybe I do need to get rid of this hall pass quote then. What color hair does she have, though? Now I got to figure that out. Ooh, I feel like she's a redhead. Redhead? All right, let's do red. Like a fiery, because she's like a fiery personality. Okay. Uh, Vosh the Stampede is saying, Bird is trying to win the hot chick contest, but her wax job went wrong. Oh. <laughs> I think she's a hot chick. I'd vote for her. Definitely. I wonder what her voice would sound like, because I'm just picturing like Tweety right now, because it's a similar size. I feel like she's a smoker and has a really like raspy, deep kind of voice. Raspy, okay. Especially because her neck is so like thin, I can imagine her sounding kind of like she's being like choked all the time. <laughs> fair enough. That, you know what? That's fair. Emily is saying, wait, is she Johnny Lawrence? Who's Johnny <laughs> Lawrence? Johnny Lawrence is from <laughs> the Karate Kid slash Cobra Kai. Um, he's... Um, and Cobra Kai is basically a bum. Like he's like, you know, never with the job, alcoholic, always vomiting on himself. Like he's that guy. And he's trying to start up a karate dojo and it's hilarious. You just gotta watch Cobra Kai, Dee Dee. I got Clara too. Now, now we gotta get you on it. Oh man, you have a list of like five shows I gotta watch. Gotta get yep. started. Yeah, but I have my own list too. <laughs> Ronak Rock. is saying the bird's owners died and she plucked out all of her hair and feathers due to grief and anxiety. Why is it so sad? Oh my goodness. I'm sorry I gave you such a sad life, you poor thing. Do you want to be happier? Is that? No, I just feel bad because I've created her and now she just has a sad life. But you know what? I feel like she had a sad life, but now she's like finding the silver lining. She's like having a good time. Um, Seven Angelica saying the bird escaped from a science laboratory. Laboratory? Why did I say laboratory? And she's half chicken, half Jersey Shore star. <laughs> I love that. These are all fantastic. Next assignment everyone creates their own fanfics of our characters. Yeah, I would love that. <laughs> That'd be so fun. I always feel very like protective and motherly towards all my characters. Yeah. After I create them. I understand that. I think she is done though. I think that, like my girl has quickly get this guy a body. <laughs> oh, that was so quick. Yeah, wasn't really going for accuracy or anything. I just felt like he needed some extra oomph. Um, Deep is a cruel and capri... Cap how do I say that word? Capricious. Capricious God, she creates life, but is suffering. Oh my goodness. I don't mean to do it. It's this sick mind I have. That's what makes it so fun and unique, though. It's true. You know what? She has a really great life, though, right now. She has, like, a beach house. She inherited 
a billion dollars. A billion you know, dollars. A billion B, yeah. For, she for what? she like sued the company that tried to make her into chicken nuggets. So she has like a billion dollars now. And she lives on the beach, no children, doesn't have to worry about anything. She's like a single girl, tons of money, free food. Just like goes to the beach every day. It sounds like an alternative of the B movie. <laughs> oh, that movie. <laughs> oh, man. That was great. But uh, anyway, guys. Thank you so much for uh, watching our stream today. Please subscribe to the Art Prof YouTube channel and join us in the Art Prof Discord in the Art Alongs where we're gonna post our work. We'd love to see what you guys have made as well. And we also want to say thank you to our top Patreon supporters. We cannot do any of this without you. And uh, you guys continue to keep Art Prof going. So thank you so much for your support. And uh, I'm so happy with our drawings, but <laughs> anyway, guys, we'll see you next time. Take care. Peace.